Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How wonderful to be with you today, my friends. I'm so glad you could be there, and you're not going to be sorry that uh, you watched this program today. It's one of, uh, maybe, maybe my favorite topic, I'm not sure, but it's way, way up there, and that's missions. My dad was a pastor, and I've watched through my lifetime how missions have changed. Uh, used to, a missionary would go away to a far country, and we wouldn't see them for four or five years, and now they can fly back and forth. And, and then a few years ago, something came to the church called Short-Term Missions, where just ordinary church people, people who love the Lord, would go with the missionary team, and they would build a few houses, and they would you know, help just for a few days, just for a week. And it really has um, been, it's, it speeds up the message that we're trying to give out. That's what we're talking about today. And I have Than and Megan Crafham with me uh, today to talk about uh, Hope Project International. And I, I'm somewhat familiar with it because um, I have the most awesome daughter, and she is a wonderful Christian wife, mother, professional harpist, Bible teacher, and missionary. I counted up. This girl has gone on five missionary trips just in recent years. It's her heart. And she has gone with uh, Project Hope International, and uh, the reports you get just kind of give you chills. I want to show you a picture of uh, her family, and they were, they've gone on too. That's uh, her and uh, my son-in-law, Chris, and those past six foot gentlemen there are my grandsons and I'm so proud of them the last time they went they built three houses um, in Nicaragua so uh, hard hard work and so that's you know that's the nitty-gritty of the gospel that's where that's where the rubber meets the road and so you're going to meet the founders today of Project Hope International and these young people guess what they were children's pastors and I thought, how perfect, because now they're winning children to the Lord, educating them, helping them in other parts of the world. You're going to love them, so don't miss a minute of what they have to say. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make cranberry muffins, need I say more, and they look really good. We'll let you decide if you want the recipe. Uh, before I join her, though, remember we are viewer supported. The information is on your screen. You can use a credit card. Uh, you can write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. If you use a credit card, that number's on the screen also, 1-800-229-0059. And um, I just love the way we all connect. And, and this program could be a great difference when people get a burden maybe for a missionary project. So we're all workers together here. So when you give to homekeepers, you're really helping a lot of other ministries as well. So thank you in advance, and here's here's dun, Stephanie. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's so that's what I walk into when they come in here. They all act like I'm. Dun, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, we usually stand and applaud, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> how was this recipe? Usually we do them together. I got here early and I did it all by myself, and then Arthlene came in. She said, "Are you done?" I said, "Yep." <laughs> she said, "I'll go get my tea." <laughs> Yes, that's our, uh, that's our routine, but also, oh, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I slept till the alarm went off. She slept. I got oh. up at 4.30, so that's why I came in early. We have so many early birds around here. 4.30, that would be unconscionable. No alarm. Mm -hmm. I don't need an alarm. Okay, okay so. You can tell these aren't from a mix. they got all of yes. the grease here. So you have butter, you have milk, you have an egg. You're going to mix those together for me? Yep, and okay. you're going to spray my pan, okay? okay? I have flour, I have sugar, I have baking powder. And you know it calls for fresh cranberries. cranberries. But, you know, we have learned from this show that Salt. certain things don't come in. Yes. Yes. Until they think it's the right time for the season. Mm, orange zest. Oh, yes. Such a freshness. So Love we have that. the... Um, we have dried cranberries. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. They might be dry. I don't know, but we'll find out. We'll find out. So I'm just mixing all the dry with the orange zest, and I'm going to put in the dry cranberries. Some of them were actually craisins. Mm -hmm. We had dried cranberries and we craisins. We just something red. Yeah, so we I just... Know. I didn't even have to tell you that. 
but. but real fresh cranberries would be so much better. Now, if you use fresh cranberries, you're supposed to take them and coat them in sugar. Oh, and really? that will keep them from falling to the bottom of your muffin. Really? Yes. How does that happen? Because they It's magic. They would weigh a little bit more. It's just magic. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was just watched this morning on the before I came Thank down you. here. Do you do you like to watch the president get on the plane and fly away? That just you like that? that? Fascinates me. <laughs> He's on his way to Florida right now. He's coming to the villages. But I, I was watching, and as the plane comes, uh, uh, taxis a little bit. There's this first time I've seen this. There's two black SUVs going with it, and then when it turns around to you know lift off, mm -hmm. I wondered where they were, and they were right at the point of lift off. And I think if something happened, they were right there. Yep. Take care of the yep. take care of the president. It's fascinating stuff. It is fascinating. If we knew all the behind the scenes stuff, <laughs> we would probably just have our minds boggled. Yeah, that's uh that's what uh, Wanda and I were talking about. I said there's so many little innovative things like that to protect him and his family. But he'll need protection the rest of his life. Yep. That might get a little might get a little testy on yep. that one. Okay, so you sprayed the 12, and all I'm going to do is scoop in. It's a pretty thick batter. Mm -hmm. So I just scoop it in, mm -hmm. and then you bake it at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And look. And they're beautiful. A cup of tea, a cup of coffee, oh. a girlfriend. Yes. That's all you need. Yes. Oh, I grab one of these because uh, we used these on a show in another. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what's it say? Jesus yeah. and coffee. It says Jesus, That's and, my, Jesus and coffee. One of my mottos. <laughs> <laughs> a true coffee drinker, uh, you know, coffee that, that is would in be my, the, the greatest oh, yeah. combination, combination of all. Jesus, Jesus and, coffee. and coffee are in my top five of life, so yeah. there you go. Okay, what's number one? That's what that I'm, would be Jesus. Of Jesus, course. and then and then, uh, and then the coffee, along, and, and then, and the then the coffee, babies, <laughs> Christmas. My family is up there with right below Jesus, like 1.8. Yeah. Where am I on your list? Let's try well, these uh, muffins. Yes, yes, no. <laughs> oh, you know I love you. I know. Mm. Oh, those are good. Let's see. You can see how beautifully they. Mm. Mm -hmm. so just a good. You definitely with... need a cup of tea though, or a cup of coffee. Yes. But so yes. good. And a good book. Mm -hmm. All right. If you want this recipe, all that information is coming up on your screen. There are several ways for you to get it. And following that, you're going to see a very moving video of Project Hope International. You're going to be moved. Stay tuned. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. This is Justo. His parents work long days in the factory outside of town to provide for their family. Still, he lives in a makeshift shelter and meals are sparse. There are many kids like him in Cristo Rey, Nicaragua. Children whose families cannot afford school are left on their own much of the day. Malnourished and without a safe place to call home, these kids are left with little opportunity for a positive future. This was the case for Justo. He and his brother spent their days rummaging through a nearby trash dump, looking for food, clothing, anything they could find. Each day on the way to the dump, Justo walked past the local church. For nearly two years, Justo and his brother turned down a regular invitation to join the church's feeding program, a program sponsored by Hope Project. Finally, Justo's brother, Freddie, accepted the invitation. The boys became regulars at the program, which provided them meals and taught them about the Bible. It was through this program that Justo's entire family became involved with the local church and introduced to Hope Project. In 2014, Hope Project built Justo and his family a home, a real one that would keep them safe and dry. 
Now you'll often find Justo working hand in hand with Hope Project teams to build homes for his neighbors in the barrio. Over 45 families now have homes, each complete with concrete floors and real beds, both typically out of reach for families in Cristo Rey. Justo also helps out at the feeding program, which today feeds over 230 children weekly. Life has completely changed for children all over the barrio. Now they are free to live more like a child should. Free to laugh, play, and dream. Hope Project now sponsors 150 of these kids to attend school. This year, 13-year-old Justo will go to school for the first time. By meeting children's basic needs, the future in Cristo Rey will be forever changed. That touches my heart. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen it three times now, and uh, thank God for video. Yes. Uh, gives us a message. Welcome. This is Than, and that's the middle part of Nathaniel. Yes, right out of the middle of Nathaniel. How'd that happen? You know, no one can tell you the answer to that question. I, my parents don't know, my brothers don't know. Let me shake your hand. I know what we go through because yeah. my name's Arthur Lean, and I've been called Lean oh. for years by family and friends. And uh, I can I can pronounce your name, Megan. Yes. We're so glad to have you, and you are the founders yep. of uh, Hope Project International. And I feel that I I almost a part of it uh, mm. because my family, uh, the four, have gone twice, yeah. and these big grandsons of mine, and Caleb, the oldest one, he said something I've never forgotten. He said, I think those children are happier than American children. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. You ever hear anything like yeah. that? They don't have anything. They, they don't, don't have, have phones. Anything. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them don't even know when their next meal, where their next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm. And so to see their joy and the peace that they have in the midst of their hardship is really um, touches your heart. They, they are happy. And I've got pictures of them just hanging all over my big <laughs> grandsons, you know, just having yeah. them. There's... There's a look in their face yeah. that mm -hmm. they're very happy. And a lot of those boys good. really crave that male attention, have mm -hmm. like a strong male in their life that'll look them in the eye. Are a lot of them fatherless of like here in the United States? Yeah, there's a lot of children growing up without fathers or maybe they know who their father is but he's he's not active in the family mm -hmm. or he's in another part of town and, and so they really crave that. We bring a lot of men, a lot of teenagers mm -hmm. along the, on the trips and the, the kids just gravitate to those men. Well, that's good. Okay, uh, tell me how this happened. Were y'all raised in Christian homes? We were. We were both yeah. raised in Christian homes, and we knew from an early age that we um, were called into the ministry and really called to reach children specifically. And later on, we felt the pull more towards missions, but we didn't know what that looked like for us, and we didn't feel called to be um, a, like a traditional missionary that leaves um, the United States and mm -hmm. goes and moves to a different country. And so um, we really thought about what we would do if we had unlimited resources. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we were playing kind of a game in our house. It's like a what if, you know, if we had millions of dollars to yes. show what would up. we do? What would we do? And yeah. it started off with like vacation homes and cars, and we were like, well, we wouldn't do any of that. Yeah. We would go and help pastors who are reaching children. Mm -hmm. We would go and help missionaries that are reaching children. And then. And how old were you when you had that conversation? Uh, 29? Yeah. We were 29 years old? That, that's something everybody ought to sit and think about. Yeah. What if I had all the money to do whatever I wanted mm -hmm. and um, did some of this start did you grow up in the same church or anything or did you listen to missionaries when you were young? Oh, well, I had opportunity when I was 12 years old to go to Brooklyn, New York and uh, see Metro Ministries there with Bill Wilson and, and really have my heart just opened up to like children in poverty and how to go mm -hmm. to them not, yep. not wait for them to come to you into yep. your church but go out and find them and then later on in life I got to go to Haiti and mm -hmm. as a college student and got to see Do you know that. Bill Wilson is my spiritual son? Though. Yes, Absolutely. yes. Yeah. We have so much respect yeah. and um, admiration for that ministry. And so uh, it's, it's just such a wonderful story about how, how the Lord works. Mm -hmm. So um, you were children's pastors yeah. for how long? Ten years. We mm -hmm. worked in local, local churches, uh, three different churches. Mm -hmm. And we just, we always were trying to do more. We always had this kind of vision of more. We want to find more kids, mm -hmm. reach more kids, do more to reach the kids that God puts in our path. And so... 
just kind of led us. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am so impressed with how you transitioned from that. I'm sure you didn't have a big put money. <laughs> you didn't no. have any churches behind you. No. no. You said we're going to yeah. we're going to do this missionary thing, yeah. and so uh, people like my daughter and her family, mm -hmm. they go in and, like I said, they built three houses. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to? Uh, Describe a house Absolutely. in Nicaragua. And so we build houses in Nicaragua and also Guatemala as well, and they're slightly different. But in Nicaragua, it's a simple home, 12 by 12 structure. Uh, it's, it's built with block and tin and kind of local materials. We, we want to build a house that the, similar to someone else in the neighborhood would have if they could have it. Mm -hmm. and, and so the walls are tin yeah. and the roof is tin. 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 Yeah. It, it's block halfway up. Yeah. And how we build it is that we have these huge blocks and we dig um, we dig a. Um, a perimeter around the home and we set the block into the the perimeter of the home and that way it keeps rats and snakes out of the home for the family mm -hmm. um, it keeps the children safe at night from from those um, and then also it has a concrete floor and the concrete floor is really life-changing it's really what is life-changing mm -hmm. about the home yeah. and so, that was so interesting to learn that that uh, where they build these homes uh, a, f a floor is an upgrade yeah, yep. yeah. not everybody has a floor yeah. no. But the children stay a lot healthier if yes. they have a floor. Yes, yeah. it reduces infant mortality by 50%. It, um, the respiratory health of adults and um, children uh, increase significantly. It um, improves cognitive development, which is interesting to learn. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps really? children, yes, children, um, it keeps children healthy so they can go to school and they can, they're not missing school. Yeah. It's really just the concrete floor alone is life changing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we want to get the website up. Uh, you you can donate to this uh, ministry for sure. Uh, I'm just so impressed with it because um, you're very young, and to start something like this, and you had the wisdom, I'm sure, mm -hmm. from the Holy Spirit, right? Absolutely. To find a church yep. to work with. That, what a shortcut! Yeah. Yep. What a shortcut straight to a church, and the pastor in this church. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Pastor Carlos Sanchez. My daughters told me that he is the most authentic yep. Christian she's ever met. She's met a lot of Christians, yeah. yep. a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. But this man really made a profound um, impression. So you're, you're walking into a ready, set organization. Yep. Yep. And you tell them we want to build some houses for your people. What, yep. what do you need? We, what we actually do is we come... Um, we meet a pastor and we say, what is your vision for the community and how can we help? Mm -hmm. So our organization helps children in the areas of nutrition, education, shelter, and spiritual development. And we say, what are you doing to help children in those areas and what can we do to help? And so Pastor Carlos, he was um, had started the idea of building homes out in that community yeah. and he introduced this idea to us and we said, that sounds like a perfect project, let's do that. And so that's really how we started building homes in Nicaragua is because it was the Holy Spirit leading that pastor for that community and, and we just joined in what was already taking place. And what are the four, th four goals? Nutrition, Nutrition. education, education shelter and spiritual development. Wow, you can't beat that. Yeah. No. And um, so what about education? I, I've i said it on this program many times, let's yep. get them saved and then educate them. Right. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Uh, that's, that's how you're gonna build world changers. Right. right. And get some Christian people in offices, high offices yeah. of yep. the government. Uh, how do you, what is the educational system there? And so um, in, um, in Nicaragua, they have um, public schools that children can go to, but they need a uniform and supplies in order to attend. And it's $45 for the year. Um, it costs for uniform and supplies. And a lot of parents um, are illiterate themselves, so they don't value the, the sacrifice that that would take to purchase supplies mm -hmm. and uniforms for their children. So um, we make supplies um, and uniforms available to the children that are part of the discipleship program at the church um, so that they can go to school. And then we also went to the director of the school and we said, what can we do to help you improve the level edu of education at this school? So there are about 1,500 children that go to the school in the community that we And this homes. is a government it's school. It's a government yep. school. And she said, we don't have any classroom supplies um, and we don't have any teacher training that we need oh my and goodness. so yeah. um, so we said we can help with that and so um, we provide every teacher with all the supplies they need for their classroom for the year so mm -hmm. um, colored paper crayons um, math uh, manipulatives um, a library we're building yeah. libraries and schools um, every everything that you would need for a classroom 
we provide for them. We actually asked them, come up with like a dream list. You know, if you have anything in your classroom and, and they came up with this huge list, they put a coffee pot on there for, for the, the office. For the teachers, yeah. coffee pot. Yeah. They oh, said, what a they, luxury. They like, you know, they, they shot for the stars. And, and when we looked at the list, it came out to about $80 per classroom mm -hmm. for everything they would need. $80. $80. Yeah. And how many classrooms? Uh, in that school, there's 30. And this is something now that has even expanded to where we're working with more schools as well. Yes, uh, and I got some great viewers out there, so I know you're listening to this, and the website is on the screen. You can go through there to uh, give to this. We've shown you a picture, and I can I can still vouch for it because my family's involved. Mm -hmm. in yeah, yep. absolutely. Very much. Uh, when, when, did you have a burden for missions, uh, you know, when you were a lot younger? Because yeah. you, you kind of came through the American right. church. Yeah, well, I remember missionaries coming to my church as a mm -hmm. child, and I actually thought, Dear God, if I could do anything other than be a missionary, <laughs> please, because I just thought no electricity meant I couldn't watch sports and I couldn't play video games as oh. a child, you know. <laughs> and then as I got older, <laughs> I realized there's more to the story. And, and I got to go on a mission trip, a short-term trip, you know, 10 days in another country, interacting with the people, the local church there. And that really sparked my heart for missions with that. So if they contact you through the website mm -hmm. uh, and they would like to go, you can give them that information. Absolutely. Yeah. I. I was just so pleased that my grandsons wanted to go back. Yeah. yeah. And um, the interesting thing, one of them didn't think he'd get paid for that week. Right. And we don't know if they made a mistake and paid him or what. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't the Lord get took paid care of that. God paid, him. Yeah. God paid him for the week, yeah. By trouble. Yeah. Uh, now, when you get, it, it looked to me in that short clip, mm -hmm. two minutes, that I saw this awful thing and then it almost, kind of morphed into, it looked almost like a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was, it was a big difference. Yeah. Yes. So little by little, um, homes are being built. The quality of life is improving. Um, since we've started building homes out in this area, out in this community, um, they've brought electricity out to these families. So they've, yeah. they've really? gained electricity in the last six years. Mm -hmm. um, we've just seen significant life change. We've put in a water um, tower and a water pump at the church. So the church is the only facility in that community that has running water um, and, and sanitation. Yeah. And so... Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Do, do they dig well? What do they do? Yeah. Well, there's um, a community water tower, and they have access to water for two hours a day, but it's just like a spigot in their front yard. And so for two hours a day, they have running water, so they fill up these large barrels of water yeah. um, during their their window of time for water, um, and that's the water that they use to wash their clothes, um, to bathe, to cook, anything that they would need water for. That's that's their allowance of water for the for the day, and so mm -hmm. but that that water is contaminated. It, it's oh, I would conta think so. Yeah. yeah. And so we um, have actually introduced pure drinking water into that community through filters. So the church is a source of, of pure drinking water. So you that, supply a filter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, um, in that. That brief clip we saw, who is working to make some money? Is it are the women or the men? Or and if they so, how do they make a living at all? Yeah, so they get very creative in in Crystal Ray where they work. There's we've met women that iron clothes, wash clothes for other people. Uh, people sell tortillas, make bread in the community and sell it. And then a lot of people have to leave that community and go do like factory work, mm -hmm. work in farms and things like that. And then through our house building project, we've been able to employ. A lot of men, a lot of teenage boys. Mm -hmm. uh, at the church now, there's a sewing co-op. Women can make money sewing material and, and producing a product that they can sell. They take to the market and they sell. They take to the market and so. Uh, describe the church to me. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, do they have Sunday school and yep. you know different kinds yeah. of ministries like we do here? Yeah. So this church is actually it's open seven days a week. I mean, every time we're out there, there's someone coming and going from the church. Kids eat breakfast there. There's tutoring. Uh, men and women go there for job training and, and different opportunities. Uh, we've done medical clinics there. And then they have their weekend services. Yep. Um, they have uh, services throughout the night. Um, they have like a men's night, a women's night, a youth, youth night. Group, yeah. They have um, programs for kids on Fridays and Saturdays during the day. Um, and they just really it's, tried it's, to reach like, yeah. the entire community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What creates this po poverty? Is it crooked politicians? Yeah, I think it's probably a generational thing. There's mm -hmm. been, you know, Nicaragua as a country has had times where they've been increasing and growing and then they've had times where the economy has, has come crashing down and I think it's just 
generational. But what kind of system yeah. is it? Communist? Is it socialist? Is it, um, they it would, doesn't sound like a capitalist. Yeah, thing. Right. they would say um, they have a democratic society, so yeah. they, oh, they have do? an election. They have a president, um, and they have a president. Um, but it's um, it's different, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is yeah. when a nation is founded on right. the scripture. Right. Yeah. Uh, Europe, you know, they had Martin Luther, and uh, now they're going the wrong direction for sure. And I think America is in many ways, although um, a lot of great things going on in America as well, but uh, in that system, that government system, that's where you need to keep believers. That's, right. that's where you need to keep yeah. Bible believing uh, believers because, um, you know, they're throwing gay marriage at us and. Uh, abortion right up mm -hmm. to the moment of birth and all and God's not going to smile on any of that and so when I look at the country like you're re uh, describing mm -hmm. we better be careful yeah yeah we're going that way because we've had the blessing of the Lord just without measure right yeah, yeah. so uh, now you we're almost out of time but what other countries are you in so we serve children in Guatemala, and then we serve children in Myanmar, which is a neighbor of Thailand. And so um, we go to Myanmar twice a year. We um, fully fund an orphanage for 40 children there that's on the property of a church. And then wow. we um, yeah. also have just dedicated our first boarding home in rural Myanmar, and that will house 40 middle and high school age students to be able to attend secondary school where primary school is only available to them in their home village. Um, and they will be raised and living in a Christian environment in Myanmar, which is less than 4% Christian. And so... You know, you guys are blowing me away because... Um you don't have big some big group, and, yeah. and you you don't have the mechanism to raise huge amounts of money. Right. right. Yeah. It's really um, we I just mean, your children. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. We just lean into the power of the Holy Spirit, Absolutely. and that is really what um, we just we just trust in the Lord, and we desire to hear from Him, and He always provides every time. Um, he asks us to step out in faith and take on another project. He just always provides. And so it's really interesting. One, um, one day I was praying for the kids in Myanmar, and I was like, Lord, what if we don't receive the money for this? Yeah. And he said, it's my reputation on the line, not yours. And so he just reminded me that he's going to take care of them because he's promised to take right. care of these children. And yeah, You know, the, the, one of the greatest things about home keepers is that I can sit here and bring these kind of ministries to you, and I've done mm -hmm. it for, for many years. That's the wonderful thing about Christian television mm -hmm. is we can tell you and show you what's going on around the world. You never know because uh, your church can only handle so many missionaries a year right. and uh, here and there and what kind they are. And we can bring you any kind, any place and tell you what the Lord is doing. And I value that. And we are out of time. But please join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.